Hello Xenographers, it's been a long break but I'm back to do another video and this video is going to be about this lens. This is the Helios 44 and all its derivatives. This is an amazing lens. Uh, it's a copy, an exact copy of the 1930s Zeiss Biotar lens and it was acquired by the Russians um, after the Second World War when uh, the Zeiss uh, patents and works were legitimately taken as war reparations uh, from Germany. Pretty much the entire factory was taken to Russia um, and this was one of the designs that they inherited uh, and they continued to make it right up until, in some form or another, I think up until the mid 90s. It might even be the may, may even be a version made of it today. I'm not sure. This is one of the most mass-produced lenses ever made. It may even be the most mass-produced lens ever made. It may be the single lens of which there are most examples in this world. They were made in the millions and millions and millions, huge quantities of them. They went through an evolution over time. Um, the earliest versions date from about 1958 or thereabouts. There could be some earlier ones, pre-production ones, prototype ones. Uh, and I know that the very first ones included the, the word Biotar in the name. They weren't always called Helios. Um, but it's a very, very common, very, very prolific lens. And it's becoming popular again now uh, in the world of digital photography. People are understanding now, coming to understand what a lovely old lens this is. Uh, and it has two major advantages, two major selling points. The first is that if you get an early version that is up to a roundabout the uh, beginning of the 80s, the Helios 44 or the Helios 44 2 in this shape. It has, I don't know if you can see that, it has a preset aperture ring, which means that you can set the aperture. Let's set this one to, I don't know, where's the thing? Let's set this one to. 5.6 and what we can do is vary with this stepless second aperture ring behind the main clicky aperture ring there's a, there's a stepless declicked aperture ring and you can now vary that steplessly without clicks in between the apertures that you set so if you set it to f16 for example it already was an f16 all right so you set it to f16 and you can now vary between those uh, values steplessly. Why is that a useful thing? Well, it's really useful in filmmaking. Uh, if you want to vary your aperture in filmmaking, um, it's very inconvenient to have clicks. Firstly, because you can hear the clicks. Uh, and secondly, because the physical force needed to move between clicks will shake your camera and it, 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 you just can't do it. But with a stepless aperture ring you can apply very light pressure, turn this ring, check your screen so you get exactly the exposure that you want. During shooting you can do that on the fly during shooting. So that's one reason these lenses are very popular. That's not the case with the later Helios lens. The later Helios lenses after the 44.2, so that's 44.3, 44.4, all the way up, I think, to 44.7, and this one, 44M. They don't have a stepless aperture ring. All they have is the usual standard clicky ring. Can you see that? No stepless ring. They're a little bit shorter, a little bit more compact, which I suppose is some advantage if you like that sort of thing, but 
There is no stepless aperture on these. So if you want one, my advice is get one with a stepless aperture ring, then it's there if you need it. And to do that, you need either a 44 or a 44.2, and that will be in this body shape. Just have a look at the differences in body shape there. Can you see the difference there? So the 44 and the 44.2 have this little sort of collar on the back that attaches to uh, the camera. The 44M doesn't. So this is the shape that you want. If you get a lens in this shape it will be either a 44 or a 44.2 and that's the one you want with the stepless aperture ring. In terms of image quality, what are they like? Um, well, I mean, they're a Russian copy of a 1930s design. What can you really expect? Can you expect fantastic image quality? Well, it depends what you mean by fantastic. Um, they can be sharp. They can be really sharp. Uh, and I'll show you some examples of that. Even when you shoot wide open, these lenses can be very, very sharp indeed. Are they as sharp as a modern lens? <sighs> Do you know what? I don't know. I've never measured it. Um, but they look sharp. They give a good sharp image. And they're capable of giving a good sharp image um, if that's what you want. One area where these really do score is the out of focus, the quality of the out of focus areas in a shot, um, otherwise known as bokeh or bokeh or however you say that word. Um, and what Helios does is if you get the right conditions it gives a swirl to the out of focus areas. The, the, uh, for some reason the um, shape of each out of focus element assumes not a circle but an ellipse, a quite a stretched out ellipse and when you get a series of these together you get this swirl effect in the background and, and it's, it's fantastic, there's nothing like it, no other lens has a signature like that. The mere one comes close, the mere one has a little bit of swirl but it doesn't match the Helios in my opinion. Um, for swirliness and you get that on all the Helios versions um, even the very late ones like this one you can still get that swirl um, and that's really cool it's 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 kind of like an art lens in a way you do get this unique effect all right what else was I going to say aperture blades number of aperture blades uh, are another reason is another reason why you might make a choice between uh, types of these lenses. Early Helios 44s had 13 aperture blades. By far the vast majority of them had 8 aperture blades. So up until around about, from about 58 to 64, they were made with 13 blades. And that gives you a rounder uh, aperture, essentially. Um, it gives you a more smooth circle. Uh, actual physical circle made by the aperture. Which is better? Personally I can't see a great deal of difference between them um, in image quality, the image quality, the quality of the swirl, the quality of the out of focus areas does seem pretty similar to me. I, I can't say that the 13 blade is, is vastly superior to the 8 blade. Um, but it's a personal choice, you know, if you want a 13 blade, they are out there, but they will cost you a little more. Mount is another thing you should consider, the type of mount. Most of them came with an M42 screw mount, as you can see here, this one, which is this one. This is a 44.2, um, and this has a, a an M42 screw mount, so you can mount it to pretty much any, well not any, but a, a huge range of uh, SLRs that were made throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s. 
Uh, and of course you can uh, get a cheap uh, M42 adapter to your digital mirrorless camera uh, and use it on there as well. Early copies of the lens had what's called an M39 mount and you've got to be really careful there because you, you might have heard of the Leica L39 mount that the early Leicas had, the screw mount Leicas, the Feds and the Zorkies and other Leica copies and uh, Leica spin-offs shall we say. The thread, this is an M39 lens, the thread is, or is it? No, this is an M39 lens. You can see that it's actually smaller, so the one on this side here uh, you can see that the mount, the thread is actually smaller. Uh, so this is M39. And while the thread is the same as the Leica thread mount, the L39, the actual physical thread, and you can mount one of these on an L39 camera, a Leica, a Feder or a Zorki, they won't focus because this being an SLR lens, this is a retro focus design and they will not focus on a rangefinder. You might get some macro focusing ability. Uh, similarly, if you try to put an L39 lens on a very early Zenit with the M39 mount, um, you, won't, you won't be able to focus. You'll get some macro ability, so you'll be able to go very, very close, uh, but only over a very, very narrow range. Um, so these uh, these M39 lenses are not interchangeable with L39. However, what you can do is uh, you can buy a very cheap adapter ring. It just screws on there and it turns an M39 Helios into an M42 Helios. In my opinion, these are an absolute knockout of a lens. They are they give a fantastic image. It is one of my favourite lenses. Um, so much so that uh, I decided to do this video on them and uh, just talk about what a nice thing it is. You can buy these for... Uh, a good one will cost you probably around about... 50, 60, maybe 70 pounds. They, they go for slightly less and, or, or slightly more than that. But that's about a rough sort of ballpark figure. Um, best to buy, I would suggest, from uh, a seller who's at least able to check that they're lubricated properly and um, check that the apertures are working properly and clean the blades of oil. Um, you can buy Zenit cameras from a certain auction site um, that will very often say, uh, oh, not sure if it's working, uh, not used in some time. Um, and what you will then get is you'll get a Zenit camera with a Helios lens on it, but it won't be checked and uh, it may, may well be that um, you can't use it. Um, this one, for example, I bought recently, and it's jammed up solid. It, it just will not move. So this one will have to be dismantled um, and cleaned up and lubricated properly and uh, checked and tested and put back together. Um, so I really, I should have bought from, uh, you know, somebody who's, uh, who's got one ready done, but um, there we are, I didn't. So those are, those are the pitfalls and perils. So there we are, um, the Helios 44. It's a brilliant lens, it's a bargain lens, and it's a wonderful lens. And it's pretty fast. It's F2, um, so it'll cope with low light, and it focuses to uh, 50 centimetres, half a metre, which is pretty close, pretty, you know, close enough. That's on full frame. Uh, if you go on APS-C, it will turn into something like, off the top of my head, something like a 90mm. Uh, or on uh, 
micro at four thirds, it will turn into a 116 mil, so a good portrait or tele lens. Um, good thing about using it with a crop sensor lens, um, excuse me, is that the minimum focus distance gets lower. So on full frame, it'll focus to 50 centimeters. On APS-C, it will focus one third more closely. Uh, and on micro four thirds, it will focus effectively anyway, right down to 25 centimeters. So you're beginning to get really close on, on micro four thirds if you use one of these lenses. So there we are, great little lens. Um, get one if you can, use it, enjoy it, but do make sure you buy a good one. Okay, cheers everyone, thanks for watching, see you soon.